Welcome to the Path of Purpose interview where we share our unique and universal stories about finding and fulfilling our purpose. My name is Katya Rasanen and my intention is to inspire you through these stories. And today I'm here with Marita Rallenbach who is the founder of Harmonic Wholeness, a course creator, mentor, and instructor, specializing in the areas of food, aromatherapy, and life transitions. She elevates food and sacred mundanity as self-care and helps to embrace your inner, belong inner longings and dreams so you may access your best, highest self. So now I'm so excited to have you here, Marita. Thank you so much for taking this time to come here and share your wisdom with us. So oh, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm just honored to be your guest. I love having you here because I am so interested to hear more about you. I just shared the little glimpse of who you are and what you do, but could you share more about you, you and your work so that we get to know you better? I sure can. I, I work with food, the, the everyday sacred, the food that we eat every day, um, I elevate it to the sacred and really help instill my students to create an awareness around not just what it is they're choosing to put in their cart, but then also the awareness of how does it make you feel? Like when you eat something mm -hmm. and it's just too rich. And, mm -hmm. you know, many times we just write it off and go, oh, well, you know, I, I, I did that. Well, but I want you to go further and kind of like really tune into your body. So I use the, the everyday things like in, in, well, in my world, the food and the aromatherapy. And I, I help people elevate it and move through life in a different way. And I help a lot of people with change and, you know, change like is <laughs> there. You can't, you cannot, avoid it and some of the changes that we encounter are things that are put upon us for whatever reason or however and some changes we uh we seek out and i think that if we are in balance within ourselves it's easier to navigate those changes yes and i just love the everyday sacred that is such a beautiful way to put it because we need to eat <laughs> <laughs> Also, like from my own perspective as well, since I have been moving a lot, like when you're transitioning, when you are moving or changing something, sometimes the food is a little bit overlooked, but I also realize how important is, is especially during those moments, yes. to have a focus what I put into my body, because the comfort food it's not really working like we would love to. <laughs> you bring up a good point because when we travel, specifically when we travel and we're out of our norm, we're not in our home, we, we don't know the grocery stores, we're probably staying in a hotel, and we just have a everything everything is different, right? And Sometimes it's easy to go with the flow, but a lot of times we come home and we're just like, oh my God, I feel so gross just because nothing was the same. Mm. And that's why when, like when I travel, I, I want to ensure that I at least have a refrigerator in the, in the hotel room. And I, I have been going and buying gallons of water since a trip many years ago where I was in a very dry climate and oh my god I could just all I could do is taste the chlorine in my mouth and ever since then <laughs> it's like I can't even do tap water so I, mm. I at least have my good water that I can drink and and I've kind of habituated how I how I travel it makes some of my 
some of my travel companions sort of crazy, but then it ultimately they appreciate it. You know, when it comes right down to it, they appreciate it. Um, so or whatever that's worth. Absolutely. And, and was that the way you found your purpose? Cause that's always, I'm curious how people find what they are called to do. So was the traveling part of your discovery what you want to do or was there some other event that took place when you were like, okay, this is the direction, this is what I want to do here? Well, that's a, that's a really good question, Katya, because um, I have had the love of food like forever. Um, my mother was a good cook. Her sister was a chef at a hotel. Um, her other sister was a really good cook in a completely different way, which is kind of weird when you think about it, you know, like these four girls and they're all very different in their approach to food. And then there was a brother who was extremely, um, extremely sophisticated and he would, I just remember all my families in Germany. So the timeline of how much time I really spent with these people is pretty little but I remember him like grinding his own grains at night and making the muesli, you know, before it was like available to buy, <laughs> like in the store that way, he would make his own muesli in the evening and soak it overnight, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I come from, at least on my mom's side, this love of food. And I've had a lot of people tell me over the years, you really should do a YouTube channel on, you know, like, you know, so that they tell you this and then you have this resistance. And um, what honestly changed for me was uh, four years ago, just last month, I had a brain injury. I fell, had a brain injury and really wasn't capable. I was not capable of doing most of what you and I would consider normal things. Mm. Um, I, I couldn't read and comprehend. I couldn't tolerate if I have music on it had to either be instrumental so classical or in a language I couldn't understand which is very curious um, I could watch television because it uses a different part of the brain but basically I, I couldn't do hardly anything and I really took to the kitchen I took to it was like I can cook I can read tiny instructions on the, in, you know, like on a recipe and then hopefully remember it by the time I got back to the kitchen and I started cooking and that's, um, that's where the love of food really, um, settled in. And I did start being more open with sharing online and, and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Interestingly, pr just prior to this injury, I had created a course, Nourish Your Way Home, A Delicious Journey Toward God and Food, with the premise that what we eat impacts our ability, our inclination, our desire to, to communicate with a higher power. And I had it all set. It was not um, online. It was going to be a live, you know, call-in kind of a class with, I did have a Facebook group for it. And um, I had it all ready to go. I left for a Young Living convention and I only made it one day and then I had to turn around and come back because on that one, first night is when I got hurt. Mm -hmm. And so that course just sat there for two years before I could like dust it off and start over. And um, I just find that very curious that, that, the whole food thing happened while I was in recovery, but I had this course over. It's just very interesting. <laughs> I'm not sure how that's all supposed to come together, but somehow it's relevant. <laughs> somehow it's coming together. And what I heard from you also when you shared about your family and your upbringing, these seeds were already planted yes. there. Yes. The surroundings and then little by little, and now you kind of found your way exactly to share that message mm -hmm. and when the time is right there is always the divine timing like which is exactly. sometimes a really interesting concept like oh i bought this program then but 
things happened i got a didn't i wasn't able to go through and then then you did exactly and there were some things that um i intuitively purchased i can right i i i mean it's it's not like it's not adjust. It was like, I really couldn't think. And my intuition just, it, it, it flourished because I couldn't go into the, like the buyer's remorse, you know, you know how you buy, you buy emotionally and then you justify it or go, Oh my God, what have I done? I didn't have any of that. So I, I bought this program. Um, actually it's a platform that I have my website on. I have my coursework on and I bought it as a beta person thing and it sat there for two years <laughs> but I bought it <laughs> you know <laughs> so it, it I really learned to be I learned to just be and the part of the brain that tells you you're bored wasn't working <laughs> So it was broken when I had a practitioner. I don't know. I was probably in that. Why me? You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> Or why? Whatever. And she says, well, your brain is broken. Mm. And the way she said it, it was like, oh, all of a sudden I could like relax into that. You know, yeah. like I'm not making this up. It really, there really is something wrong and my brain is broken and I get to fix it. Mm. So kind of that's kind of where um, this all really started in a kind of back roads kind of way. <laughs> well, but you are here now and doing yeah. the work. So that is the right. thing. Like how we get there is not always, <laughs> it's curious. I'm always so curious to hear about it. But what matters where you are right now today and sharing your work. So could we talk a little bit about more like who who come to you? Who are the, your like people who normally come? Hey, I want this everyday sacred thing, and like, who is your typical client, and what is the challenge when they seek your help? Well, they usually are people who it's like they're right on the cusp of what we would call awakening mm. there there's some kind of discord in their life that's big enough to make them uncomfortable enough to start pushing and they don't know what they don't know they don't know what to ask because they don't know that there's an answer <laughs> you know um and so it's it's truly a lot of what i do is is like you said this divinely guided the I have to really trust that people find me when they need me. And we know that that's going to happen. It's just, it, it, that's just the way the universe works. Um, I was at an expo and I had a sign that said something like, ask me about um, how food can, I don't remember what I said, how food can help you with your spiritual life or something like that. And it was a six hour event and I had one person ask me and she just kind of like, she pointed at the sign, like what? And she read it to me, what? And she ended up, she's in my program. So, you know, that's what it's all about. That one person that is ready to hear at the level that you're singing. Yeah. And um, I just think it's exciting that like these, these, these women who might, I usually work with women. I was at a, uh, a really nice little clothing boutique in my area that is going out of, say, out of business. And they've been a fixture for over 40 years. I remember my mother going there. And I was just so sad. And I said to the woman, well, what are you going to do? Like, she's her entire career. She's been in this little boutique. She says, I don't know. And my response was, well, I just worked with this local community college, like two miles from this shop. Um, and I'm putting, I've, they've asked me to create a, a course on change with aromatherapy. Her eyes lit up like it was Christmas. <laughs> it was like and she, 
she took a card and she wrote her email on it and she said, well, here, she's interested. Like I'm pre-selling this class. <laughs> And I didn't even have, I don't even know how much it's going to be. I don't really have the dates yet. So it, it, that's the kind of thing, you know, is just, you find them. Yes. You, you find these people that need what you got. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Like, cause you, and I, I just love the story. <laughs> she was like, oh, you were heaven sent. Like, it's just. Right. And, I, and it was, she, I was not a stranger to her because I, I shopped there. I shopped yeah. there. So, yeah. you know, we had this kind of, I know you and I'm comfortable giving you my email address kind of relationship, yeah. right? <laughs> so, so if somebody is now listening this and they are like, okay, I feel I might be ready, but I would like to know where could I start? And then of course, contacting you would be the first greatest thing. And I will put your contact details below. But how, the, how they can start the transition or the change to really embrace the sacred every day and the food and help get the help from aromatherapy if that's their interest. So what, what would you recommend as a first step for them to do? I think the first, well, like before I enter the picture, right, is they... Mm -hmm the first step is that they've said yes to themselves, even though they may not even, even know it because they don't have an answer. Mm. They don't have an answer yet, but there's like, I'm looking for something and I don't know what it is. Like, yes. and yet it's like when I find something, I know it's going to be a yes. That's like the pre Marita. <laughs> <laughs> and the second thing is I do offer what I call holistic huddles where we just spend 15 minutes talking about really, I mean, like laser focus, let's talk about you. And I have, uh, like when you schedule the appointment, I have some intake questions. So I kind of know where we're going. And because you think about it on the surface, 15 minutes isn't a lot of time. But when, when you're really focused, you can get a lot said. I have a I work with a coach and she offers 15 minute little meetings and I'm like, Oh my God, well, you're done in 12 minutes because you know, because we just know what we're talking about. Yeah. So that, that's like, you know, once you're ready to actually take a step forward, um, then it would be, let's do a holistic huddle and see if what I do is of interest to you. Like, it, mm -hmm. you know, there's something, some, you know, it may not be for you, but it might be the best thing ever. And it might be the most perfect fit and it'll, it'll be fun and you'll know it. So that would be the first step. Absolutely. And I, I just love that because I have been myself in the situation. I know I'm looking for something, but I just can't yet really say what that thing is. But I know <laughs> when I get there. <laughs> so, so if you're experiencing that, then... Nice then you can like that might be the sign that you might be like looking forward to contact with marita or just start digging deeper what the answer could be oh marita it seems you froze for a moment hopefully you are yes. back <laughs> yes you can hear me right okay perfect so is there a, something, a special message or something that you would like to say to people who are now listening to this? Okay. Okay. I, I can't hear you. Okay, now you are anything. back. It seems to be that there was internet connection issue, but I can hear you okay. now. Okay. Um, I, I can't even see me. Oh, shoot. <laughs> well, we can hear you. Okay. And, and the, it seems that the internet froze in your end, but right now we can hear you. So if, and now you are back. Now you okay. seem to be at least okay, a little bit, but <laughs> it's the, and we, we just keep going because this is, 
this is what life is sometimes it is full of surprises and we just need to keep going and uh, let's see if marita comes back if you can hear just let me know because i just wanted I to can hear you yeah. i hear you yes perfect so i just ask if you can share a if you have a special message or something that you want to say or share with the people who are listening this. A special message, like, can you give me a little bit more direction on where you're wanting me to go? Well, some people are just channeling forward as something as to as a closing sentence or, or something like you already shared a great tip. So just maybe encouragement or inspiration. Because as you know, sometimes when we are starting a change, if you like kind of see like, uh-oh, maybe I'm not eating what I'm meant to be eating, like, or I know I could be eating. So then they might need some encouragement there <laughs> or something like that. Well, with regards to being encouraged, I think it, Number one, I like. I really like to encourage people to be curious. Um, it doesn't mean that whatever you're curious about is the answer, but at least you've explored it. Mm. Um, the other thing I could suggest is uh, I I really really teach this and encourage this for students or anybody who are they're wanting to integrate a new habit. Just start slow, like don't unless you're in a life threatening i am i am ill and i know that if i do x y or z like totally turn your kitchen upside down um and replenish it with all new stuff don't do that um just because number one it's expensive it's discouraging and then you're going to look at all this weird i call it the weird food and <laughs> you're going to go i don't know how to cook it i don't know what the hell to do with it <laughs> Yes. <laughs> right. So I, I really, uh, I have a, in one of my modules, I talk about how, what I did when I went gluten-free almost 10 years ago. And back then it was, it was hard. I'll mm -hmm. give you that. It was difficult. And I, when I started eating this weird new way, I would buy some weird food every time I went to the store. So if that meant aminos, like coconut aminos or curry sauce or Himalayan salt or, you know, something that is not in the, in the average household, you're not finding that. So mm -hmm. rather than buying it all at once and then going broke and looking at it going, well, I don't know what this is, just do it little. <laughs> Take it, take little tiny bites. <laughs> and if you're curious about my course, Nourish Your Way Home, I would invite you to book a holistic huddle and we'll talk about it and see if it's a fit for you. Um, I think it's a great course, of course, because I wrote it, but it really does take you through not only the food, but it looks at uh, spiritual practice and it talks about uh, the vibration of food and how when you're eating high vibration then you're you know it, it's just all related and we don't think about that kind of thing hmm. that's beautiful and thanks for sharing that tip because I can see I have done that like I got into this pro detox thing and I bought everything and then I went home and like all right what have I done <laughs> and first of all it took me such a long time to be in the supermarket trying to find these things and yeah so i love that tip like be practical start with like doing these microscopic changes one thing at a time yes. and then getting your support so i will post the link to the comments below about the huddles because i think that would be a wonderful way also to test and see if this is for you. So thank you for offering that. And I thank you so much for your time and this fun, fun interview that we had together and all the information that you shared and tips and encouragement. I just love that we, are, we had this opportunity and I love to be connected with you because oh, you, you are just 
such a radiant light as well and supporting so many people in your wonderful ways. Thank you, Katya. That's very nice. And I really enjoyed being your guest as well. So keep watching Path to Purpose and please do subscribe to this channel so you get always the notifications when I post a new video. And I'm sending you loads of love and light. Stay well and stay blessed. Bye for now.